On July 19th, 2015, I started a YouTube channel called Nintendo, planning to share my thoughts on animation in reviews and countdowns. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, and the past year has been a roller coaster ride of sweat, tears, and dank memes. I went from zero to over 4,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for all of your support. But we shouldn't forget that I wouldn't be here if it weren't for my first real video. The Top 10 Upcoming Cartoon Network Shows and Pilots. To be completely honest, I don't like this video all that much. It's sad that this was probably many people's first impression of my videos, because this countdown has a countless number of problems, like these to name a few. But despite all of its errors, I've still gotten requests to do a follow-up to this video. And since I don't want to disappoint anyone, this video will cover other Cartoon Network pilots and confirmed series released or announced in 2014 through July 2016. This isn't exactly a top 10 list, but I've decided to use this format to organize my thoughts in a nice complete package. And if you are interested in anything that I mention here, links will be in the description. Let me be clear that this is just my opinion, and that this video was made before all these series were released. So with all that out of the way, here are my top 10 upcoming Cartoon Network shows and pilots for 2016. Stop crying like a big fat baby, cause Ben 10 is coming back! So I know that the Ben 10 reboot was on last year's list too, but since it hasn't come out yet, more information about the show has been released, and this list was short one entry, I'm going to be talking about it yet again in an entry that isn't ranked among the other shows and pilots on this list. But even after a year, I've still not seen a Ben 10 show, since there's a lot of other cartoons that I and my audience want me to watch. I'll get to the original show someday, but for now, I'm going to be going into the reboot without much prior knowledge to see if it can entertain someone new to the show like me. This reboot will retell the events of the original series, but with different aliens, a different art style, and much of the same voice cast. The art looks like the Powerpuff Girls reboot, but everything is actually done in the same style, and moves pretty well. A lot of fans are really angry over this new show, but I don't see why. Although it's completely unnecessary, some of the original crew will be involved, the plot seems like it will remain about the same, and no one complained when the other Ben 10 shows switched art style, so why is everyone complaining about it here? As a non-fan, I don't see the hate behind this show, and I'm willing to give it a chance despite the fact that this is the fifth Ben 10 series in over a decade. But so far, it looks better than this. Okay, I'm robbing this place! This is a hold up! Whoa, whoa, settle down there, buddy. Settle, settle down. Give me all your money. No! You. Hold up. Why am I wearing this ski mask? I'm not skiing! I give this video a Ben out of 10. To add to the pile of terrible Cartoon Network pilots is Bottoms Butte. You know you're off to a great start when the title of your series is plastered on the protagonist's butt. The premise of this recent pilot is that an alpaca named Beverly was a teacher, but then her bun got so tight that it caused her brain damage. So now Beverly and her best friend Peanut live in an old mansion and try to get money to fix their water slide slushing machine, but then make everyone sick with lemonade made from pool water. Did you understand any of that? Because the plot's as ridiculous as Batman v Superman. It's cherry. Mm -hmm. The first thing you'll probably notice about this show is that it is incredibly similar to a regular show. It looks the same, and has the same concept of two best friend slackers who get into a situation that gradually spirals out of control. But instead of having two well-written characters as our protagonists, we have Beverly, an irritating brat who poisons her own town and somehow comes up on top, and a character that is just Eileen from regular show. I see no point in making this a series when we already have a superior version that's better written and doesn't have character designs that look like the devil's children. Overall, I find Bottoms Butte to just be a poor imitation, and I think it deserves a spot at the bottom of this list. At first glance, Apple and Onion looks like it's going to be yet another borderline unwatchable turd. Just look at it. 
The art style is flat and unappealing, and the animation is very by the numbers. But upon further inspection, Apple and Onion is alright. Its pilot may be pretty predictable, but it's still got some charming aspects. Apple and Onion follows two nerdy pieces of produce that live in a world populated by foods. When they're accidentally invited to Hot Dog's party, they need to learn to act grown up in order to impress Onion's crush, French Fry. While it uses a standard plot and features a duo with a dynamic that's been done to death, I actually enjoyed some of the humor, particularly the gags made in the middle of the episode, when Apple and Onion are sent to jail. There were also some great characters like the convict Beef Jerky, and the plot about growing up was relatable and kind of sweet. Not everything worked, but as a standalone pilot, Apple and Onion has some good things and some bad things. But if more were to be done with it, I'd like to see a lot of changes. It's not bad, but there's certainly room for improvement. I have an odd opinion on Back to Backspace, which is only a pilot at this time. I really like its concept and setting, but I'm not too fond of just about everything else it has to offer. Back to Backspace takes place in the world of Backspace, a place where all ideas go once they've been deleted from the internet. The ideas are then re-educated, sent back to the world, or destroyed depending on their quality. Backspace is managed by a zany girl named Patty, who dresses like SpongeBob SquarePants and is accompanied by Herschel and Sweatpants, two mildly annoying comic relief characters. Let's talk about the good stuff first. The world of Backspace has a ton of possibilities for great stories. The animation is nice especially the blocky 3D backgrounds, which create great contrast against the 2D characters. There's also hints of backstory for Patty, the lone human being in backspace of unknown origin, which is something that catches my interest. But on the flip side, the art style for the characters resembles almost every other modern Cartoon Network program, the characters are nothing special, I didn't find it too funny, and the characters in the real world just look really ugly. I'd kinda like to see Back to Backspace get picked up for a series just so I could see some interesting stories unfold, but this is another case where I'd like to see some improvements made before that happens. Here's something you hardly ever see on Cartoon Network, a puppet show. Pillywag's Mansion is a pilot that was pitched by the voice actor for Benson, Muscle Man, and Pops, Sam Marin. It revolves around the crazy recluse R.J. Pillywags, who hosts a show where he presents a cartoon and asks the viewers questions, all while a man is suffering inside the stomach of a horrid beast. This feels like a slightly more crazy and weird Sesame Street, but with just as many memorable characters. I enjoyed this pilot's dark humor for the most part, especially how it mocks the question of the day aspect of most children's shows. The correct answer to the question is it better to be big or small is... Big! Cool. To me, the strangest part of this pilot is the two-minute animated short that features two tiny aliens that see a naked woman. It's not very funny and feels like part of a completely separate show. The structure of this pilot made me think that Pillywag's Mansion could work best as bumpers promoting Cartoon Network's other shows. The channel has done ads with puppets in the past, so I think Pillywag's Mansion would be a great fit for that. At the very least, it would be better than the creepy ads they're playing nowadays. This fantasy comedy was created by Kyle A. Carroza, who's worked on a ton of other cartoons over the years. The show follows the warrior siblings, Perhias and Vamber, who work as warriors for hire and search their world for magiswords, magical swords that are sometimes cool weapons and other times useless. Mighty Magiswords was originally a series of shorts released by Cartoon Network on mobile devices, and now it is going to be a full series coming fall of this year. I watched all 10 of the shorts in preparation for this video, and I didn't think they were very funny. Now, I'm going to give Mighty Magiswords the benefit of the doubt because of how it was presented. My first impressions of this show were in shorts that were less than 5 minutes apiece, which limited creativity and budget, and made each short feel very rushed. 
I see a lot of potential in Mighty Magiswords, and while I don't think it was utilized well in its shorts, I think with more time and money, this show can become something special. Now you're probably wondering, why is this show so low on the list if I have a lot of problems with it? Well, it's because from the clips shown at Comic-Con, most of my problems are beginning to be fixed. Keep up the great work, guys. Justice League Action is a new superhero show coming to Cartoon Network this fall. Now, I never saw the original Justice League show, but I've heard some pretty good things about it. However, this reboot will be going in a slightly different direction, as it will now be made up of 11-minute episodes that star Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman, and have different members of the DC Universe pop up in every episode, a la Batman the Brave and the Bold. A lot of people were worried that this show would be similar to Teen Titans Go!, due to its recent success. But I think that many sighs of relief were had once the first trailer dropped at Comic-Con. From the looks of it, Justice League action may live up to its name and give us great action, animation, and characters. My only worries about the show at this point is that the pacing may suffer due to the shorter episodes, and the comedy may bring down the show a little, as I didn't really love the only joke made in the trailer. I can fix that! Yeah, I'm just gonna need some duct tape. Or I don't need like a lot of duct tape. I won't be worrying too much since trailers aren't always a good representation of the final product. But overall, I'm looking forward to Cartoon Network's first action show in three years. Here's hoping that it will be better than the last time Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman came together on screen. Yeah, I think it's clear that I was not a big fan of that movie. AJ's Infinite Summer is a pilot from another regular show storyboarder, Kobe Jones. It follows a teenager named AJ who tries to have the best summer ever while working at a big corporation. Think Phineas and Ferb, but slightly more silly and crazy. While it does use the simple and overdone story of one friend taking the others for granted, the humor really helps it stand out. This pilot is very funny. Almost all the gags made me at least crack a smile. The snappiness and absurdity of the humor reminded me of early Spongebob. Besides the current Cartoon Network art style that just won't seem to change, this is a really solid pitch for a series, and I would love to see it get greenlit. However, it's been years since this show was conceived, and Cartoon Network already has a Slice of Life series. But even if it never goes anywhere, I'll still love the first Infinite Summer. Even if it only lasted eight and a half minutes. Jack is back! After over 10 years, Samurai Jack is finally returning with the fifth season ran by the original creator of the series, Gendy Tartakovsky. Now, I really enjoyed the original run of Samurai Jack. It was a great cartoon that offered great action and animation. There's a little comedy now and again, but if you're looking for some laughs, you're probably not going to find many here. As good as the original show was, it was unlike anything else that had been on Cartoon Network. That may be part of the reason why it was cancelled after four seasons and left with an unfinished story. However, the series will now reach a conclusion in another season on Adult Swim with a mature rating set 50 years after season four. These changes raised a few eyebrows, but Gendy was sure to address these problems in a recent interview. I didn't want to go like full on, you know, heads getting chopped off, blood splurting everywhere. But at the same time, I also wanted it to be kind of newer and exciting and take advantage of some of those things. I'm interested to see where this revival will go. The artwork looks great and faithful to the original, and the time jump opens up tons of possibilities for great stories. I just hope the show can get by without the voice actor for Aku, Mako, since his voice helped make Aku one of the best characters on the show. I have faith that Gendy and his team can deliver a great conclusion to Samurai Jack, and I hope that it can pave the way for Cartoon Network reboots of a higher quality. In 2013, Cartoon Network released a couple of pilots online. Some of them became series, while others gradually faded into obscurity. But in my opinion, there was one pilot that stood above the rest. Lakewood Plaza Turbo. 
Created by Steven Universe storyboarder Ian Jones Quirty, this little show takes place in a shopping plaza where heroes train to increase their power and flashy moves. It's a love letter to 90s anime and gaming, and has likable characters, a unique rough animation style, and a fun plot. I could spend hours talking about everything that I loved, like how it pays tribute to badly dubbed anime with some poor lip sync every now and again. The 2013 pilot for Lakewood Plaza Turbo left me wanting more, so much more, but for years it seemed like the show wasn't going to go anywhere. But then, in 2016, Lakewood Plaza Turbo returned, in the form of a mobile game. I'm glad that the show is getting more attention from Cartoon Network, but I really want a full series out of this. I understand that they want to do some kind of multimedia thing, and that's fine, but it seems like they're just teasing me at this point. But alongside the game, three animated shorts were released, focusing on the three main characters of the series. Each of them were done by a different animation studio, and while some look better than others, they're all nice little stories that make me want even more. I know that Cartoon Network isn't done with the series, as they've had recent game and animation fan events, but can we please have a show? I know that I sound like a stupid fanboy when asking this, but, but I see so much potential with this show, and I would hate to see it go to waste. And those are my thoughts on 10 more Cartoon Network pilots and upcoming shows. I hope this video satisfied those who wanted to know my thoughts on these topics. But if you disagree with me, that's fine. After all, this is all just my opinion. Thank you guys for watching, and for supporting me for one entire year. Here's to many more. I'm Nintendo, and if you excuse me, I'll be waiting for Lakewood Plaza Turbo to become a show. Yep, it's going to get greenlit soon. Any minute now. If we just wait for one more second, then it's... Best Original Song of 2016.